Hello, my name is Suzanne Vassello and I'm going to um, take you through uh, the PowerPoint presentation today which describes the course transfer pathways in health sciences and there'll be another presentation later in the year about this but to get you started and to get you planning in course transfer uh, this is a really good um, presentation to get you thinking along the lines of what you need to plan for as you go through the year. So the presentation will outline what course transfer actually means in the context of health sciences, what type of course transfer you're applying for, and again, later on in the year when the application forms are required to be submitted, we will go through this because we do want to be sure that you submit the right forms for your course as well. We're going to look at what courses you can apply for transfer into and there is certainly a range of health science courses that you can um, opt to undertake and uh, the, again they're different categories of transfer but that shouldn't obstruct you from applying to them whatsoever. We're going to look at what your chances are of getting in to them at this point and we're going to do that just by looking at past success rates uh, that we've had um, with students getting into these types of courses. We're going to have a look at what marks you need and what marks matter for transfer and that's quite pertinent at this point in the year because you've started your academic year and you're going to need to think about where you need to get to in order to apply for a transfer. So thinking early and ahead and planning your time and making sure that your assessments are in and of a high standard is actually quite important. Your application assessment, we'll go through that. We're going to look at how and when you apply for an internal course transfer. Again, that's not terribly pressing at this stage, but it will be come November. Uh, that's usually when the forms are due, about the 30th of November in any given year. You'll be notified of your application outcome and we'll go through that. And of course, there's more information available uh, during the year as well. This PowerPoint is very comprehensive, but there's also more information at various sites and we'll certainly highlight that here. So I just wanted to highlight for you what the prescribed core first year subjects actually look like. And you may have seen the, this slide in other presentations, particularly during orientation week. And it's important to note the prescribed core first year subjects because it affects the type of transfer category that you apply for. So as you're aware, the um, AIM module and the Woman Jika module are two online modules and I would hope that by now you would have completed those. If you haven't, I recommend you get online uh, very soon, um, hopefully within the next week and complete those modules as well. These are the six prescribed core first year subjects. Not all courses do them, but most in health do. So there are three in semester one and three subjects in semester two. Uh, in most courses, there is an elective for students to undertake in each semester. And some courses don't have electives. So for example, our nursing students don't do an elective in each semester. However, they do a nursing subject in each semester. Um, similarly, social work students do not need to choose an elective and neither do our dietetics or human nutrition students. So there are variants on this structure. But the point of this slide is of course to say that these are the core subjects in health. And that means something when we work through the rest of the presentation. So the categories of transfer very much come down to what the first year of those courses actually look like. And there's a reason that this table is in three columns. The courses that are listed in the first column here are those that take the full CFY prescribed course, which is what we had just seen on the previous slide. So all of these courses will take the six core subjects and the elective choices as well. The courses in this second column or middle column will actually take the core subjects either in full or in part and will unlikely do an elective. They may do a discipline specific subject instead. And dentistry, although part of the rural health school, does not undertake any of the core first year subjects. There are different categories of transfer and I don't want you to get too hung up on them at this stage. However, I'll just briefly run through them with you. There are three categories. If we start with category A, category A is labelled as the type of transfer where you're 
coming from a non-prescribed first year course to another non-prescribed first year course. So for example, you're going from the Bachelor of Agricultural Sciences to the Bachelor of Health Science Master of Dentistry course. Um, you could have gone from the Bachelor of Ag Science to, I don't know, Bachelor of Arts. They're certainly not um, an internal health type course transfer that we would consider for the courses that we would use to rank. Category B are those uh, courses where the student is coming from a non-prescribed first year course or partial prescribed first year course to a full prescribed first year course and vice versa. So for example, these are students who, for example, are going from the Bachelor of Human Nutrition to the Bachelor of Applied Science Master of Physiotherapy Practice. So the Human Nutrition course is partial or non-prescribed to the Physiotherapy course, which is a fully prescribed first year course in its first year setup. And the C's, which are the ones that we mostly deal with at the college level and the ones for which we have good data at this stage to report, are the category C type and these are the ones where uh, we have a transfer from a full prescribed first year course to another full prescribed first year course. And so an example of that would be if you were going from the Bachelor of Health Sciences to the Bachelor of Applied Science Master of Podiatric Practice. And in that case, you would go straight into the second year of the podiatry course. So if we were to sketch that out in alignment with our table, we can see that the category A's, as we noted before, are going from a non-prescribed first year course to a non-prescribed first year course. The B categories are going from a partial uh, first year course set up to a fully prescribed first year course. And then the C categories are those which we mostly deal with, are those within which you will transition between courses that have the same core first year set up. And the benefit of the category C transfer is of course that you can go straight into the second year of that, uh, that th of the next course without actually adding any more time to your enrolment. So in summary, we can look at it like this. So an internal course transfer for category C looks like this. You come from a first year of a course that you're currently in and you apply to transfer to the second year of another course, which is your preferred course, and then you complete that course in full. It doesn't add any more time to your time here at university. The thing that I wanted to point out very strongly about this slide, however, is that you do still need 120 credit points to proceed. And uh, although not all of the first year subjects were well, prescribed core subjects, for example, you do an elective, you still need to make sure that you've done all of your credit points, that is 120 for the entire year, before you can apply to transfer. That's very important. It's one of the, the criteria that we actually have set for students in the transfer process. The other thing to be mindful of is that if you're not successful potentially after your first year into getting into a second year of your preferred course, that we do actually allow you to reapply after the second year of your course and after the third year of the course that you're in, should you so wish to move on. Um, and the important thing to note about that, however, is that even though you've progressed further within your course, that the only marks we will use to consider in the transfer process are those that are coming from the first year. So whilst that's still an option for you to do if you're not successful in your rounds this year, be mindful that your score actually doesn't change even though you're progressing further in your own course. Now, one of the things that we need to be mindful of is that this is a merit-based competitive process and it's a um, popular one. You know, in any odd year, we can get about 800 applications for these sorts of categories of transfer. But the question that is interesting that we've asked here is, if you applied for a category C transfer in 2015, or coming into 2016, were you successful in your transfer? And the success rate at the moment is around 24%. So it's, a, it's not the smallest figure, but certainly it doesn't make up the biggest portion of the pie. So it is a still a competitive process rather that you need to be aware of. There is data available on the internal course transfer webpage, and this is a snippet of it here. And the good thing is that you can actually get years of data um, that have been presented. This is what we call the WAM cutoff. And the WAM score is the average of the six core first year subjects divided by six. So at the end of the year, we, 
we take the average of all of those six and then we put them in the table. And uh, the, f the number here is that which is the, the minimum cutoff that we used for students entering into that program. Let's just have a look at the website, however, where that data is actually showing. And uh, this is the internal course transfer website. And you can go straight into the data source itself. So this is a rather large spreadsheet and it'd be easier when you have a look at it um, and print it out for yourself. But one of the things that you will see is in fact that we have uh, cutoff scores for 2016 here and they go all the way down to 2011. Um, there is some fluctuation in this time of course for certain courses and for certain campuses. Um, you can apply to study at Bandura or outer campuses as well. And you can have a look at the, the scores over the years. So it's quite an interesting document and that's where you access it from. Okay. So the question we should ask is, um, how do we calculate the WAM? And I did just mention that just before, but as noted, we take the average of the six core first year subjects and we add them up and divide them by six. The elective is not used in the WAM calculation for category C transfers. That's, and that's really important. You still have to pass it though, because remember we said you needed 120 credit points to progress, but it is not used in the final calculation. This example here, even though the student's done very well in IDH and in SDH, the average way I'm still at 76, which is a B average, um, because we've been brought down by some of the subjects in this set. The other example you need to be aware of is that um, students have been uh, applying for advanced standing for prior learning, which is okay to do. But if you are going into the internal course transfer application process, you need to be aware that the score that you got for what we considered to be the equivalent subject at your prior institution will be used in the calculation. So let me explain that in a different way. In this spot, we would normally have the core first year subject HLT 1 RAE, which is research and evidence in practice. And uh, what we do at this university is we give credit for this subject against HBS 108 health information and data, which is a deacon subject that we consider to be equivalent. So this student has done HBS 108 at deacon and the score that they achieved was 72. If we're saying those two subjects are equivalent, then we should take the score that the student had achieved at their prior institution. On the internal course transfer page, there is a table which is actually quite lengthy and I'll go through what this means. Um, what this is actually saying here is that in the first instance and really for, most in for the most part, we actually rank on WAM. If, however, we find ourselves in the unusual situation where we have one spot left in a course for transfer and we have two students, both of whom have the same WAM, then we can do one of two things. We could ring the um, head of department or course coordinator and ask whether they would take another student or if that's not possible, then we would re-rank those two students based on a core first year subject. So for the case of physiotherapy practice, if we had two students sitting on the same WAM and we had to pick one, we would then re-rank using these subjects. So we would look at which of those two students had the highest score in HBA. And if by chance they had the same score there, we would then look at who had the highest in HBS 1HBB. And that's how we would re-rank it. So if we have a look at the internal course transfer webpage just once more, the area that I'm actually referring to is this table here. So it's actually called re-ranking table for category C courses. And it refers to item 10 of the internal course transfer guidelines, but that's effectively just uh, what I've noted there. So each course really has 
given the subjects that they would prefer re-ranking based on should students come up with the same mark. And it does happen. You know, there are a lot of students and there are a lot of applications. We need to make sure we've factored those things in in our calculations. But effectively, that's what the table's saying. The other thing to be mindful of is that you can, obviously, as we've discussed, transfer from a category C to a B course, and again from a category B to a category C. And here is an example to uh, think about when you do that. So for example, here's the case of students going from a category um, C course into the Bachelor of Exercise Science. Now remember, the Bachelor of Exercise Science doesn't take um, elective subjects. In the elective spots, these students actually do two core subjects across the year. So in semester one, they'll do a exercise science subject, which is related to nutrition. And in semester two, they will do an exercise subject as well. And so if you went into the Bachelor of Exercise Science from a category C course, in the second year, you will likely uh, overload and need to do a year one discipline subject that you didn't do in the first year because you didn't choose it as an elective or it wasn't available as an elective or you weren't sure at that point even if you were going to transfer. So rest assured you can still make up ground in the second year um, and that you will be complete in three years still. So that's quite advantageous in that case. The course has uh, um, worked out study plans for students whereby they can still complete in three years. However, that's not the case for all courses. In nursing, for example, if you haven't done the discipline specific subjects in your first year as part of your elective spots, then in the transfer to the Bachelor of Nursing, you will need to make up those first year subjects. And so what occurs is that you can effectively add an extra year to your course because in the second year, you will need to do some first and second year subjects here and then again, some first and second year subjects thereafter, and it will take a, a, a longer time to get through. So you just need to be sure that you're aware that that's the case. So in some courses, you may need to take an extra year to get through your course, but that's okay if that's the course you want to do and that's the one you wanted to get into. Okay, and if you have any questions about these sorts of transitions, Certainly you can ask at any point at the Latrobe Ask counter, which is in the library foyer here on the Melbourne campus. We have a dedicated she ask desk with a she uh, representative and they'll be able to help you. Some important points to consider about course transfer is, as I've already noted, the places are actually competitive and we have a limited number of places because they're capped by the number of clinical placements that we can um, access for our students. Most of these courses are professional courses and so all students will need to do some sort of placement um, in most of these programs in the last 18 months of their course. And so if we can't supply students with the placement, we can't be taking them into those programs. The other thing to be aware of, and certainly we'll cover this later on again in the year, is that the Category C applications, which were the courses related to the first column, will accept a maximum of three applications in those categories. So you can choose up to three courses that you might like to transfer into and submit that. However, if you are only wanting to do one course, you can certainly put one application down as well. The thing to be mindful of, and I'll remind as we go on in the year, is that even if you are putting in for a course transfer, you must re-enrol for 2017 in your current course as required. If the transfer place comes through and you're successful, then paperwork will ensue at that point in time to make sure that you're in the course that you've applied for at that point. But until then, you must keep your enrolment active. And, I, and this is actually quite an important point here. It's important for everyone to have a plan B in place. Not all students will get their first preference. Not all students will be able to transfer. And in those cases, you need to think about what your backup plan is. Will you stay in the course that you're in and complete it? Or will you um, 
do something else for the year. And I think this is important to really think about. For students who are in the Bachelor of Health Sciences, you need to think about what major you're going to get into in the second year of your course. And one of the good things is, is that during this year, your profession mentor program will cover all of the majors. And so it's really important that you're aware of what the majors are that you're to choose in your second year onwards for the Bachelor of Health Sciences, what career paths they lead to, and any relevant cutoffs. So for example, physiology and anatomy, uh, that major has uh, a limited number of applicants that it'll take, and also it has a cutoff. So students have to perform quite well in human biosciences A and human biosciences B to be considered for that pathway or that major going forward in that program. So all of this should be detailed on your mentor site um, during the semester. So it's important that you start to plan ahead in that case as well. Be reminded that the Bachelor of Health Sciences with a major in anatomy and physiology as a course is also a program that will allow direct entry into the graduate entry program. I say direct entry, but do be mindful that that is also a competitive pathway. So in order to get into the Master of Physiotherapy, they do consider students who've done a Bachelor of Health Sciences with a Master in Human Physiology and Anatomy. So if you were to stay in the Bachelor of Health Sciences, um, and you wanted to do physiotherapy or occupational therapy, for example, be sure that you've done the major in anatomy and physiology. <coughs> so if we look at this overall, this is how the pathways work in health sciences. You can come in through VTAC, of course, into the first year, and you've all done that. You can undertake then at the end of your first year an internal course transfer into the second year of your program of choice. You can, if that internal course transfer pathway is not successful, you can at the end of the second year reapply for an internal course transfer to the first year and again in the third year you can reapply for an internal course transfer into that um, course that you'd like to do as well, bearing in mind that the first year score is the only one that we still use. And then at the end, um, if you stay in the course and you're not able to transfer out, you can then reapply through VTAC once you complete. You don't apply through VTAC once you're inside the course here. And don't forget that the Graduate Entry Master's programs are available for these courses, so you can enter at the Master's stream, and that is at the third year of that program. But you can't do that unless you've got a degree already and you need to make sure that you've checked the requirements for the graduate entry course that you're interested in doing um, now so that you, you're on track to uh, be considered eligible for application. The applications are assessed at the end of the year and that is really when the semester two results are released in any given year. So we can't start ranking students for their eligibility until results have been released. That is the case for any category of applicant. Here we've got A and B. Um, the only point to be made here is that these courses are assessed by individual course selection committees or course selection officers. And category C, again, we can't rank these courses until the results for semester two have been released. The difference in the way these courses are ranked is that they're done by the College of Science, Health and Engineering. So they're done internally here, which is why we can provide you with that data sheet as we've kept data over time on those courses and can report them. If you're seeking information on other courses in those category A and B and what the cutoffs were for those, you'd be best to check in with the course coordinator for those respective programs. Now, when you apply for this is not until the end of the year. We'll begin accepting applications generally in September, but traditionally the cutoff has been the end of November. So don't worry about that. We're not accepting applications at all at this stage. We also don't take applications mid-year for transfer. Transfer is only done at the end of any academic year in health sciences. You do not apply through VTAC, you must use the internal course transfer process and that'll be well delineated as we approach that time. And it's also outlined on the web page that relates to internal course transfer. 
All forms are available from the internal course transfer site. And we will certainly provide more information later on in the year and remind of submission deadlines. And um, you'll receive forum announcements as to when those dates are due so that everyone is well informed. Um, again, if you've completed a degree, you really must apply through VTAC to uh, one of the courses that you're interested in. Um, if you haven't, and you're coming out of first year, then you use the internal course transfer process. I mean, essentially the way to think about this is to say that if you're in a course, you're internal and you use the internal course transfer process. When you've finished, you're not eligible to apply internally, you must use the VTAC pathway. And again, you can certainly ask at any point if you've got any questions. So just a note about timing, uh, applicants who are successful will be notified just prior to Christmas this year. And when you are notified, you really must be sure to accept your offer within about 24 hours. The deadlines, um, are, the turnaround on that is actually quite short, but that's on purpose because we will work down the list until we've filled the places for the courses that are taking students in the second year. And we want to make sure that we um, give everyone a chance to um, have their offer before Christmas. We will say that uh, we will continue to offer until the course's enrolment is reached and in some cases that can be up until February the following year. So we may have students who decide later to decline their offer and a space opens up and then we'll fill it. But I will say this, that most of the applications that we offer or most of the applications that are successful um, will be offered before Christmas. So about 90% are offered before Christmas and very, a very small number obviously thereafter. Um, if you are unsuccessful, you'll definitely be notified in February the following year. Now all information is on the internal course transfer page and now's a good time to start tracking your WAM from semester one and every mark counts so please be sure to be on track if you need assistance with your study there is a lot of resources available here at La Trobe to help you and if you're not sure at any point it's important that you just ask so one of the keys to success is to seek help early and often if you're not sure as you transition to university life you can always seek clarification about the courses you want to transfer into from staff, that includes academic staff and client services team at the SHE counter in the library foyer. You should check your emails and the CFY LMS site for important updates and reminders. And as noted briefly in this presentation, one of the things you should spend time doing this year is actually working out what your options in full are. So that if you aren't, if you aren't successful in getting a place, you need to have a backup plan and just be strategic about that. So what is it that you want to do? Um, what else could get you to the course that you're wanting to apply for if it wasn't the internal course transfer pathway at the end of this year? Could it be a gem entry program? Could it be something like that? So they're things that you'd need to start to think about. And one of the things that I also say to students is that, um, you know, it's important to pop along too to the university open days as well. Uh, you can get lots of useful information at those sessions and you can also talk to academic staff in those forums too. So that's usually in about August on the Melbourne campus and outer campuses are usually around that time as well. So it's important to uh, think about that when you're making your choices for transfer as well. Uh, so I just wanted to thank you for listening to that. And just to be sure that you understand how to access the internal course transfer page, um, these PowerPoint slides will be made fully available for you to access. But if you weren't on, if you were at the home page of the Latrobe site, you just go to the upper search function and you type in internal course transfer. And there will be a number of things that appear, but, but health sciences is the first one that is yielded with that sort of search. There are other transfers, of course, students move in and out of courses across the university all of the time. So that's, that's great. Um, the health science one though is labeled as such. So that's the one you're going to go into. And all the detail is here. 
Um, and there's uh, some important points to note. And the transfer categories we've discussed, A, B, C, and the re-ranking tables. So effectively, this pre PowerPoint presentation has helped to summarise this information for you. I wouldn't worry too much about the um, submitting the right forms at this stage because we will again look at this and again I'll do another PowerPoint at the end of the year to help you get through that. There'll be lots of help for you to do your applications um, in time and in a complete fashion. So in the interim you can certainly come here and have a look and browse and just get yourself well versed in all aspects of course transfer and um, ensuring that you're aware of the cutoffs that we've used in the past to help students um, understand perhaps what they should be working towards at this stage in their program. So once again thank you very much for your time and I wish you every success in your transfer and in your studies this year.